Well, good morning. So today I wanted to share something that is very close to my heart, and that is multitasking and why I choose not to do it anymore. When I was halfway through college, I, I did everything I could to multitask, and I thought I was pretty good at it. Um, and my, my definition of multitasking is attempting to do two things at once, or at least switch as fast as I could, uh, kind of intermittently, when it also felt like simultaneously or at the same time. And I would do that for, well, years, most of my life. I multitask. I thought it was the normal thing. Um, I was very egocentric, where I would focus on just myself and uh, I figured everyone else around me multitasked. And that's how they got to where they got to in their life. And that's how they obtained, obtained things that they had their life that I wanted. So multitasking had really taken me to where I am now. And when it comes to ADHD, uh, multitasking is something that I learned through something called executive functioning, which comes from that prefrontal cortex, that frontal lobe, front area of the brain. And executive functioning has to do with telling time, personality, making, making decisions, how you make decisions, uh, task switching, putting things in order, taking steps, coming up with ideas to plan ahead. So executive functioning uh, helps with all of that. Now, when I was halfway through college, it, it had already taken me six to seven years just to get my two-year degree. So there is a lot of issues along the way, especially when I had to deal with my executive functioning, multitasking. It wasn't until I took my very first cognitive psychology class. Cognitive is also called cognition, which just means thinking processes. And when I took that class, I didn't really know what I was taking. I just wanted to take a course that could fulfill a requirement in one of the psych psychological areas. And this one, I believe, was under some sort of like neuroscience requirement. And the professor, great professor, she had shared with me that there is this process called multitasking, which everyone knew about. I mean, we all use multitasking as our day-to-day -day jargon when we talk to each other. Uh, but she explained it in a way that I just hadn't heard before. She, she first said, um, before I actually express what multitasking is in the cognitive literature, I'm going to show you a video. And in this video, they had at least 30 different participants in different countries. I believe it was the United States and the UK, the United Kingdom. And what they did was they had each participant put on a headset, get in a vehicle, and they also had a screen. And a part of the experiment, so this was an experiment uh, for multitasking purposes, and a part of that experiment was each participant had to drive to a, a certain route that was on a GPS, while at the same time, they had to listen to a person who was on the other end telling them to solve riddles, to solve mathematical equations. So basically this person was driving heavy machinery with busy traffic while also needing to follow the GPS, while also every now and then being told to turn left or right here or there. And they had to also uh, figure out and uncover answers to questions to, uh, from the researchers. By the way, each one of these persons says that they they were on top. They were in the 1% of multitaskers. They believed whatever the researchers could throw at them, they could handle. And every single time they messed up, they got dinged a point. And let's just say there was a 100 points uh, pretty much by the end of the exercise, if they made it to the destination, which was rare, um, they had lost most of their points. So the interesting thing about this was that they found that out of all 30 participants, there wasn't anyone that could actually clearly multitask. And that kind of comes down to the deeper part, the intentional, valuable part, I think, of what I want to share, what came from my professor. She, she shut down the video and she asked us, what do we think about that? And I was just kind of just sitting there cooking some ideas. It seemed to me at the time that people still technically were multitasking, except the quality was poor. 
And so I raised my hand and I told the professor that. And she said, exactly. And when you come from a world where multitasking is, it's not only the norm, it's, it's as if you felt you were born with it, which many people were. There are different parts of the brain with ADHD that multitask and has periods of motivation, periods of impulsivity, and periods of mood shifts, where sometimes it comes up with this perfect recipe that when we multitask, we're convinced that that is the perfect and only way to go about it. And that was my burden that I didn't know about until I took that course. I mean, even then till now, I still try to multitask, but it's, it's, it's becoming rare, more rare these days. And I'm happy about that. Because there's this part of you that wants to hold on to multitasking because you are convinced that that is being productive somehow. The more data came out uh, when it came to employment. So if, if where employers were working on a, a specific project or task, their management had had paused them and they would say, hey, I need you to check this out for a moment. And then the, the staff would say, okay, you're my management. I'm gonna do what you say. And they, they left the thing and came back to their project. But here's the thing for the majority of the participants, they came back to the project, but they never started it until about 20 to 25 minutes in. And then they had a manager go in and do it again, and the same outcome happened. There are some people out there that can return back to a project just fine. And what that's called is task switching. And task switching is a part of the executive function. Task switching also is the opposite of multitasking. Multitasking is when you attempt to do all these things in, in order at almost at the same time, while task switching is putting quality energy and focus into one lane for a bit, a good amount of time where you felt like you got something productive done, where you actually did get something productive done, like a, like a, um, a threshold that you met, and then jumping to the next task while trusting that that other one was good enough. And then you follow through with this task all the way up to the end, or quality or follow through, same thing, until you met, until you think you've met a specific threshold, and then you go to the next one. The, the other part of you tells you what a waste of time that you are taking your time on this one thing. When you could be doing a bunch of other stuff that your mind could wander or be interested in, but that interest is so enticing that it's telling you, it's telling you that when you jump into that new task, that you're getting a lot more done than if you were to just focus on one task. And that's just wrong. It's, it's untrue. It's something that we, I believe, have convinced ourselves over our years. I've convinced myself, as far as I can tell. And now I try my very best to pause, to breathe, to acknowledge that here I am again, I'm jumping over to another task when I barely spent four minutes on this one. And then when you jump through so many tasks, you get chronically burned out mentally physically you become tired and again tell yourself because I'm tired I must have put in some work to have deserved to be this tired and it's just untrue now when you focus on one task at a time and follow through and complete it that is so hard it's very hard the way that I go about it now is I do pause a lot I try to focus on one task for at least half an hour commit to it. I try. And after about the first eight to ten minutes in, I'm already losing sight and I'm drifting out of that lane when I need to come back. And the coming back process isn't telling myself, just get back. It's actually pausing everything for a moment. I made an, another video about the default mode network, um, which I will uh, put up here. And in there, you'll learn the importance of pausing and using your mental handbrake and how you can function better using a couple of added steps. But going back to multitasking, it's just not a helpful thing. In that original research that I shared with you, uh, they did say that there was a, I don't know, slim few, like a, oh, it's, it's rare, rare if someone can multitask that efficiently. So rare that it's less likely it's me it's less likely it's you, 
especially if you find yourself struggling with uh, ADHD. This isn't this isn't me trying to say you can't do something, like you're not allowed to do something, but that the brain wasn't necessarily made in that way for anybody. It's absolutely rare. And if you just try to force something like that, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get burned out, and you're gonna quit. So my message to you is to simply acknowledge, do you multitask? Do you tell yourself it's productive? Are there times it's been productive? That's okay. Are you okay enough with pausing from multitasking and committing to something in front of you while coping your way through it to complete it to the end and then switching to another task? Those are some heavy questions. I believe you can. I believe if you really take in the idea and develop it as your own culture, that no brain is made for multitasking and that you get poor quality from it and that you get great quality when you focus on that one task for a specific amount of time. When it's good enough, when you have a little bit of progression, not perfection, where you can then switch over to the next task and follow through with that, with more progression and not perfection. You have to convince yourself to go the other way, which is hard because you have a lot of practice and a lot of good reason why you multitask to begin with. Take this for what it is. It's a lot easier for me to do so. And I might have some similar struggles like you. I didn't believe it for the longest time. But the more I invested myself in the clinical and non-clinical literature, and the more that I just applied it here and there in my life, when I could, uh, you get comfortable after a while. You get comfortable at the idea that if I commit to this, even though I have no belief that it's going to turn out well, it turns out well because you spent enough time on that. Think about it like when you have times when you hyper-focus on that one thing and you become some sort of mini expert. You know what happens when you, when you zoom in. You actually get a lot of quality information and you can go in depth. You know yourself well enough where you can do that. Now imagine if you did that unorganically, because hyperfocus seems like a organic process that's still being understood by research and by individuals. Think about developing this kind of pseudo hyperfocus. And you can when you pull back from the idea that multitasking is generally a helpful process and commit to the idea that the opposite of multitasking, so following through and committing for a certain amount of time and then task switching give you can give you a lot more quality when you have that quality you have the proof when you look back and say i did that and i did that in a moment when i tried to convince myself that multitasking wasn't good for me anymore and then i did something that has quality that i can be proud of that was intentional and meaningful and when you have that done and you have the proof and when you have the evidence in front of you you now have something that's justified in the process that you just learned. So I hope that's helpful for you. Focus less on multitasking and try to allow yourself to bring in the thought that multitasking doesn't give you quality. And then try it out yourself. Check out that video I shared. Uh, hopefully it can help you understand the, the kind of the neuroscience behind um, pausing and putting on that handbrake, especially for ADHD and see what that does for your process. I think after some practice, you're gonna get really good at it and you're gonna wonder, why did I multitask in the first place? So I hope that helps. Take care.